Hi everyone, in this lecture I am going to show you how to load data from Microsoft Azure Blob Storage to Teradata Vantage. So first of all I will create the Microsoft free trial account, then I will go in the Azure Services storage account, then I will create a new storage account from here. Subscription, by default you are going to get the Azure subscription one. Okay, right now I only have this free trial subscription. Resource group, mm, so I am going to create a new resource group from here. Resource group is a container that holds related resources for, for it as your solution. Okay, now I am going to name this resource group as data loading. to vintage dash rg okay data loading to vintage uh, the spelling seems to be incorrect okay it has been created storage account name so let me just name this storage account name as Vintage loading account. Okay, uh, region. So I'll select the East US region. So you can select your nearest region. Okay, standard. Uh, okay, fine. I'm going to set as default. So I'm not going to change anything, I'll make it default. Okay, review or next advance. Next. Okay, I will not change anything. This will be as default. Okay, fine. Running final validation. Now create this. Initializing deployment. Okay, deployment succeeded. Now go to the home. Storage account has been created. This one, Vantage Loading account has been created. The next step is to create a container. So container is like directories, okay? Like for example, I have these multiple directories. Uh, so in Azure, uh, it's, it's, it's a container, okay? Now I'll create a container for my for this task so i'll name this container as employee so employee container is going to have a data related to employees okay create so let me show you the files which uh, the file which i'm going to load I'll go in files, so I'll I'll load this employee file in my Teradata Vantage, but first I'm going to upload this file in Blob Storage. So let me first close this and let me just go in my container and I'll upload a file. Browse for files and I'll upload this file. Upload, file has been uploaded successfully. Okay, let me just close it from here. Blob type, block blob, it is a type of the storage. Okay, now fine. Uh, this is the file that I will load in my Teradata Vintage. Okay, uh, let me just go to the storage account. And now from here, I'll go in access keys. Okay, this is important. So I'm going to use this access key. So first step is since I've already shown you the file, the so the first step is I'm going to create a database. So since in DB, DBC, uh, I'm going to get an error, an authentication error, okay? So I'll have to create a new database. So I've already created this database. So let me just create a new database for myself. So I'll create this, let's say project is the name which I'm going to create create database 
from DBC. DBC is the main user. One process database has been created. Now I'm going to use this. So I'll what I will do, I'll go in my connections, right click and instead of records, I'll use the project database project and I'll connect it to the database. Okay. Connection creating connection. Okay. The connection has been successfully project. The connection has been successfully established. Now the database has been created and it is connected. Now I'll use the project instead of records. I'll use project dot authorization i'll have to create authorization so this step is optional we use it for the purpose of security we provide the username and the password username is going to be storage account name password is going to be storage account access key or sas token so storage account name in this case is going to be this one storage account okay so let me just provide this. This is going to be the storage account name and the password is going to be the access key. So access key, I'll get it from here. Uh, I'll get it from here. Show in the copy and paste here. Okay. And just execute this authorization step. So the authorization object has been created successfully. So we have created this authorization object to access the blob storage container. Okay. And we are going to use the same authorization object in the foreign table. Now the next step is to create the foreign tables. I'm going to name this table as an employee. This is going to be the name. And in the foreign table, I'll, I'll provide two things. First, I'll provide the authorization object. Uh, which is going to have my credentials, user and password. And then we have to provide uh, two columns, location and payload. So location is going to have the path of my CSV file, which I'm going to load. And secondly, payload is going to have the content of this CSV file. And okay using location so this is going to be the name of my storage and let me just provide the name of my storage from here this will be the storage name and this is going to be the name of my container this will be a container let me show you the container where it is located okay the container name is going to be this one uh, in this case the container name is employee so I have to provide this container name and then the file name uh, in the container employee. I have, I have this file employee dot CSV file, which I will load. Okay. Just provide the name now. So by default, when you are going to create a foreign table, the primary index will be a no primary index. So it doesn't matter whether you provide this no primary index or not. Uh, it will be automatically created as a no primary index. Now create this. So table has been created successfully. Now next, uh, I'm going to use the select to get the these two columns. Okay, to get these two columns, select location and payload. So sample 10. So this is going to display me 10 rows. Uh, I have to provide the name of my foreign table. Okay, now it is executing.
okay i've got the result reset perspective okay now look payload which is going to have the actual content so the first so it is going to have the uh, whole row payload column is going to have the whole row okay likewise 1001 it is going to have the full row all the for all the columns in it then this one is going to have the path of the csv file okay this location now i want uh, this data to be in the form of columns so what i will do i will use this query let me just show you the query which i will use just copy this and paste maximize it and use it here so payload you have to provide this keyword payload then you have to use dot dot then the column name in this case column name is employee then the first name last name salary and department id so payload dot dot first name last name salary department and here i'm providing the alias okay employee id first name last name salary and department from this employee so the employee is the foreign table which is uh, located on blob storage okay now select look this is going to have the actual content uh, research perspective yes okay so look the actual data which is located in my csv file all it has all the fields okay now in order to load this data in a table uh, you can create a table then you can use the insert statement to load this data either way you can use the view so in this example i'm going to create a view and i'll i'll use this i'll create a view for this data this is how you're going to create a view create view as employee view underscore as select statement from this table foreign table now create this view so view has been created successfully now select star from view look now this view is pointing towards this table okay now you can also view this view show view you you can type a command show view in the name of view so this is going to give me the actual definition of this view create view this select payload okay from this foreign table uh, so if you want to create a table and then load this data in the table you can also do that okay so hope you understood the concept of loading data from azure blob storage to to a to teradata vantage so thank you so much and have a great learning